a large model showman's engine. This is part four, making a drive pin for the wheel, checking the drive belt dimensions and cleaning up the flywheel. Each of the two rear wheels have a drive pin and by removing these pins you disengage the drive from the rear wheel, thus allowing you to use the winch drum behind one of the wheels. The problem is on this engine that one of the drive pins is not present. And I couldn't believe my luck when I looked in my drawer of small pieces of steel. I found a nice piece of silver steel which was exactly the length that I required. So now without further ado it's over to the lathe and the piece of silver steel is in the chuck and I'm going to make this into the missing drive pin. It's a simple plain turning job. I have the original drive pin on top of the headstock. I'm looking at that and copying the shape of it onto the piece of steel in the chuck. At this point in the proceedings I would just like to say I do not have a ball turning tool. Instead I'm doing it the hard way, I'm turning a ball manually on the end of the piece of steel. And I freely admit it will not be as accurate as the original drive pin, but it will be okay and you won't be able to compare it because it's on the other side of the engine. Slowly but surely I turn an even curve on the end of the piece of steel. I finish it off with a file to remove some of the tool marks and using the original drive pin as a guide it's quite simple to duplicate it. I'm using a digital caliper to measure the thinner part on the original drive pin. And once I've got the ball somewhere near I finish it off with some coarse emery cloth. By holding the original drive pin against the one I'm making this gave me the position for the groove and the groove was carefully turned with a parting tool. This silver steel was quite hard to cut with the parting tool, but eventually when I cleaned and polished the end of it, it looked okay. It's not perfect, but it will do the job. The steel that I had to make the retaining clip was far too hard and broke twice, so I gave it up as a bad job and temporarily made the part from a piece of copper tubing. I need to buy a piece of steel that I can bend into the same shape as the clip on the other one. This temporary clip will have to suffice for the moment. A good friend of mine is going to make me a leather belt. Not to hold my trousers up, he's already made me one of those. He's going to make me a really nice leather drive belt to drive the generator. I know there is a wealth of belting available for things like this, but for this showman's engine, I really would like a handmade leather belt. He sent me a paper template to try. This was made to the original dimensions. If you measure the pulley, measure the flywheel and the distance between centres, there are many online calculators available to tell you the length of the belt that you need. When I fitted the paper belt it was a bit slack so it was an easy job to cut it and measure that. My friend now has the measurements so he can go ahead and make a proper leather belt for this. The next part of the job is to clean up the edge of the flywheel. The paintwork all the way around the flywheel is quite badly damaged so the best thing to do is to remove it. I'm doing this by using the very dangerous practice of a handheld Stanley knife blade. It's quite difficult to do, you have to get the angle correct and put plenty of pressure on it. But after a while you get under the skin of the paint, then bit by bit you can remove it. Once I got rid of the bulk of the paint using the Stanley knife blade, I used this very useful tool to remove the rest. It's not fitted with a cutting disc, it's fitted with a flapper wheel. But unlike the flapper wheel that you would fit in an electric drill, the flapper wheel is in a disc form, and this makes short work of the paint that was left on the rim of the flywheel. At this stage I'd like to point out that it's not as easy as it looks. I'm holding the angle grinder very firmly, and I am controlling where it goes accurately. I found it better though to remove the paint initially with the Stanley knife blade, and I only enlisted the help of the angle grinder once I got through the main paint layer. I'm wearing a breathing mask for this, the only one that I've got, I don't go and buy any more at the moment. When doing jobs like this I always recommend the wearing of PPE, that's eye protection and a breathing mask. And I cannot recommend using a Stanley knife blade, but I've used them for years so I don't seem to have a problem with cutting myself much. And I do have at least three of my original fingers intact. So what is this wondrous tool that I'm using? Well here it is, it's a Proxon motor tool. It's nothing more than a very small, high quality, battery powered angle grinder. And the wheel that's on it was the one that was on it when I bought it. 
and as I mentioned, it's a flapper wheel. In the end though, I felt it was best to finish it off with a piece of coarse emery cloth. I will work down the grades of emery cloth down to wet or dry sandpaper until I get a really fine finish on the outer rim of the flywheel all the way round. In this image you can clearly see that there are one or two flecks of paint left on the outer rim and also some paint damage on the inside of the rim and I will put that right in a future episode. For now though that's enough paint removal. This object that I'm working on is the whistle. I don't like this whistle much at all. I'm only interested in this adapter. This original whistle will go into my box of original whistles off old traction engines. For the moment, the only bit I'm interested in is this adapter. It's a 3 8 by 40 threads per inch adapter to 1 8 BSP. Here it is temporarily reassembled to show how the whistle fitted to it. I screwed a fitting into it to allow me to connect my airline. Now I feel that I'm getting somewhere. I can run the engine in the workshop using compressed air. It's quite amazing the difference that it makes running this engine using compressed air. On steam it was just about silent, now it's clunking a little bit. That of course is down to the valve timing. The valve timing is very even at both ends of the stroke, but admission is exactly on top dead centre. Normally I like it a few degrees before, but no I'm not going to go into obsess mode, well not just yet anyway because it runs beautifully as it is. And there are many small jobs still to do at this engine before I get it to the standard that I want. One minor problem is the engine is radically over-oiling. In no time at all, the Foster lubricator on the top of the cylinder runs out of steam oil, and this is not good really. It's easy to tell when an engine is over-oiling because the inside of the chimney becomes incredibly oily and eventually gets narrower with a build-up of soot and oil residue. This is not a problem on an engine of this size, but it is on a small 3.5 inch gauge engine, when over a period the diameter of the chimney starts to reduce considerably. What I intend to do is remove the mechanical lubricator, remove all the horrible paint off it, because it doesn't need every bit of it painting anyway. I may even reduce its travel mechanically speaking, as well as reducing the oil output with the adjuster provided. More about this though in a future episode. For now though I'm just going to leave the engine running like this with various shots from different angles. I can't run it for long because my very small fridge type compressor is really working overtime at the moment. And when it starts to overheat I do feel obliged to turn it off. Here's a close up of the expansion link. I thought I would take this opportunity while the flywheel is spinning to hold a piece of emery cloth against the outer edge. If it was going faster it would clean up in no time. I've done this many times on steam engines. Use a steam engine's own power to clean up the outer edge of the flywheel. I know, I have an idea. I'll use the flapper wheel. And with the flapper wheel spinning lightly against the flywheel edge, because it's revolving, I'm getting a really even finish. Although there still is quite a way to go yet, before the rim of the flywheel becomes very smooth and highly polished. Here's a shot from the driver's viewpoint, and it's so much bigger than most of my model steam engines. Truly poetry in motion. And that's where I'm going to leave it for the moment. A driver's eye view till the end of the video. The water gurgling noise that you can hear is the crankshaft driven water pump returning the water back to the tank because the bypass is open. I'd just like to say on the 1st of May 2020, in these very strange coronavirus lockdown times, Make sure that you stay safe and stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.
Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.